Good morning, I'm Brother Driscoll, the Deacon Brother Driscoll Duvall. I'm honored once again to be able to provide the Sunday School lesson for the morning. Of course, I'm an in-team, I'm a teacher in the in-team department, Class 6A. So definitely want to give a shout out to Class 6A class, where I'm a teacher with brother, Deacon Brother Morris Dixon, so I definitely want to give a shout out to all of my students there. Um, before we do anything like we do in, in Sunday School, and we're going to definitely make this uh, like we're upstairs in Sunday School, we're going to open up with a word of prayer. So at this time, we're going to bow our heads and pray, and we have a prayer that's provided by, uh, I would say, uh, in-team Class 6A alumni, uh, Kamala Cousins. Let us pray. Good morning. My name is Kamala Cousin, and I will be delivering the opening prayer. May you please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us see another day, and thank you for clothes on our backs and shoes on our feet. We thank you for keeping us safe and shelter to keep us warm. Lord, we thank you for providing us with the strength and courage that allows us to steer away from wrongdoings. During this pandemic, it is crucial that your children unite and come together as one, Lord. For those who are not able, we thank you for providing others that are able and can intercede when needed. We thank you for giving us many chances, Lord, for we all have made mistakes. But when we accepted you, we knew we would be forgiven. As we continue through the week, remind us that we are to intercede for the helpless, the homeless, the sick, and the elderly. We also will help family and friends that need extra comfort and strength. We ask for guidance and praying for others just as Jesus did for his followers. With you, we can do anything without you, we can do nothing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Kamala. Thank you so much for that prayer. Uh, once again, I'm totally honored to be here. Uh, today's unit title is going to be Jesus and calls in his ministry. So last week, as you remember, what did we talk about last week? So Brother Duvall is always going to ask you some questions. So last week, we talked about going out of, out of our way for a friend. So this time, we're going to talk about what? This lesson title for this morning is going to be what? Standing in the gap. So we're going to talk about what standing in the gap means, okay? So the key verse for this morning will come from John the 17th chapter, and the key verse will come from verse 20 from that 17th chapter. That verse reads as follows, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message. Once again, that's John, the 17th chapter, and I read verses, verse 20. So uh, before we start reading our scriptures, and we're gonna go straight through our format as we normally do, um, I definitely want to talk about and just ask you some questions, just like we would normally do. So where is John? Is John in the New Testament or the Old Testament? That's correct. John is in the New Testament. So who was John? Okay. John was what? John was, was among the first disciples that was called by Jesus. Okay. Good. Great. Great job. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start reading the scriptures. And then we're going to continue on from that point. The, once again, the scripture is going to come from John, the 17th chapter. I'll be reading verses 14 through 24. And they read as follows. I have given them your word and the world has hated them. And for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and see my glory and the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. God's word for God's people. So we're going to, as a, as a Sunday school class, um, 
respectfully, we're going to break that down. But before we do that, we're going to actually uh, piggyback and read our wake up section. And then we're going to go and interpret what we just read. Now, the wake up section, as you can remember, is the story before the scripture. So it really gives you a good inkling of what we're talking about today. So we're going to bring this around full circle. So definitely need you to hang in there with me. Okay. So our wake up section today is going to be the story of, uh, I say, uh, Nevaeh. Okay. So Allen Howard Middle School was formed when two rival schools were merged due to low, low enrollment at both schools. Now, an example of that is would be uh, Greenville, Mississippi, Greenville High School, and T.L. Weston. Those two schools were uh, rival schools, and they, I think maybe 10 or 15 years back, they combined to form one school, all right? So think about like Powell Middle School and Chastain, or, or, or Brinkley and Powell. Think about how that would be, okay? So hold that for a minute. And I also want you to put your comments in the comments section, okay? So during the fall semester of the school year, there were a series of conflicts, right? And fight. Students had a difficult time letting go of their personal feelings about having to go to school with students from their rival school. Some students vowed to cause problems all year because they felt they were being treated unfairly by having to attend a school with students who in the past years were their greatest competitors in sports and other extracurricular activities. All right, think about that. So as a solution to address the unrest that was occurring on campus, the school district thought it was a good idea to increase the physical presence of uh, SROs, those are school resource officers. Y'all think about those school resource officers that you have at school. They're walking the halls, making sure that everything's going going good. So now, I think we had one back in the day. As a matter of fact, it was the one we had when I was in school was the, uh, he used to be the, um, he was a sheriff. He was a sheriff, a uh, Hines County Sheriff. Victor Mason, was, Victor Mason was our school resource officer back in the 90, uh, Ish, 80 something ish. All right, so, uh, so now instead of having one school resource officer, the school has two resource officers, right? So the extra officers may have uh, made sense to some, but they did not change the fact that students still did not feel valued or connected to the new school, right? So Nevea was, an, was in an interesting, uh, she was in an interesting position. She had a good relationship with the friends and family members from both schools. Nevaeh thought about uh, one of her pastor's sermons where he emphasized how God uses people to intercede. What does that mean? Intercede means what? To intervene on the behalf of someone. That's correct. So intercede for others during challenging times. Nevaeh thought that if positive changes were going to happen at Allen Howard, student like, students like her would have to be willing to stand up, right, and work toward changing the culture of the what? Of the school. Nevaeh recruited students from both schools to meet the principal to discuss the idea of having, uh, of, well, the idea rather, of how they could blend the schools to promote a sense of pride and belonging at the new school. So the principal was so impressed with Nevaeh and the other students, he vowed to help them create a plan of action to build a strong and, and positive school community. So my question to you is, what would you have done if you were Nevaeh, right? You've got friends from both schools. What would you do? Okay, my hope is that you would do the same thing as Nevaeh did. You would be the, the one to create a positive change, right? You would be the one to really um, be the one that the principal would really uh, look to to really help turn that school around. Now, Brother Duvall always says now, uh, respectfully, you know, your age, you know, you should still, we want you to be a leader. You should be a positive leader. You shouldn't be a follower, okay? Great job, great job, great job. All right, any questions about that? Put those questions in the comment section. All right, great job, great job. All right, so we just read the wake up section. Uh, and respectfully, before I start breaking down the scriptures, I've got a real nice video. This video is gonna come from Stories of the Bible and the title, and the title is gonna be Jesus Praise. So watch this video, and then we will definitely get back into uh, breaking down the scripture. Stories of the Bible. Jesus prays. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like walking on water. Oh, hey guys. And even raised people from the dead. Uh, Wahoo! At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses. 
when God brought his people out of Egypt. Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. And Jesus and his disciples were having the Passover meal together. Jesus told them many things of what was to come and the trials they would face. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and prayed for himself, saying, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so he can give glory back to you. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. Then Jesus prayed for his disciples and said, I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. He prayed for his disciples who would be staying in the world after Jesus went to heaven. He asked God to keep them safe from the evil one and to make them holy. Then Jesus prayed for all the people who would come to believe in God because of the message that the disciples would tell. He prayed for people of all time, even to this day. He prayed that followers of Jesus would be united so that the world would believe that God sent Jesus to die for their sins so that everyone could be with God forever. Okay, welcome back. Hope that video was good. Okay, so let's talk about the scriptures. John 17, that's what we're reading from, uh, records Jesus praying. Uh, and from the scripture text, we learn that Jesus prayed for who? For himself, his disciples, and those who would believe uh, through the disciples' preachings. So Jesus' earthly ministry would soon be ending, right? So understanding that his time with the disciples was limited, Jesus interceded on their behalf, asking God to keep and protect them from Satan's actions. Jesus acknowledges that he is in God and God is in him. So this unity cannot be stressed enough. In essence, God sent Jesus to this world um, as a full and complete expression of himself. So when the disciples believe in Jesus, they were able to share God's goodness with the world. So in this prayer, Jesus prays for what? For unity and for God's protection. Uh, Jesus had a very specific mission. Jesus was ordained to physically walk uh, upon earth, the earth and commune with humankind to demonstrate a visible representation of who God uh, is. Jesus, and Jesus acknowledged rather that he made his disciples different from the world by teaching them God's what? God's word. So now as Jesus prepares to return to heaven uh, to once again be with God, he prayed for the protection of those who followed him. Jesus expressed his joy in, in that both he and the disciples reflected the glory of God. This means that righteousness and godly characteristics such as love, peace, and joy were observable in Jesus and the, his disciples. Walking in righteousness, remember this, ultimately honors who? God, which brings him what? Glory. So Jesus prays that the disciples' unity would continue to grow and that they would be safe as they minister throughout the world. So above all, Jesus prayed for unity among believers down through the ages. Okay? Good job. All right. Okay, so we just read, the, we just broke down the, 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 the scripture. Once again, I definitely want you to put your comments in the comment section. Um, so let's talk about major takeaways from this lesson. So one thing that we talked about, Christ is in God and God is in Christ. You know, this unit cannot be stressed enough. Uh, in essence, what we're saying, God sent Jesus, as we always talk about, sent Jesus to this world uh, as a full and complete expression of himself. You know, think about that. His only son, his only child, he sent him as a, as a, as a complete expression of himself. So in this prayer, Jesus prays for what? For the disciples' unity and for God's protection. Jesus had a very specific mission, as I mentioned. And he was ordained to do what? Walk among the people. Walk among the people on the earth and demonstrate, as I mentioned, who God was. As I mentioned, this means righteousness, love, peace, and joy were observable in Jesus and the disciples. And as I mentioned once again, and I know we're repeating it, but walking in righteousness ultimately honors who? It honors God. It honors God, which brings him glory. And that's what we want to do as young developing Christians. 
So Jesus prays that the disciples will continue to mature in their unity and to be safe in their ministry. Okay? So uh, in summarizing, um, let's kind of talk about some things, some concluding reflections of what we, uh, what we, count, what we read. So uh, even though believers are to spread the good news, right, the good news and the good message, uh, we have no control over who will accept or reject Jesus. We know that, right? So for this reason, believers should not get discouraged. We shouldn't get discouraged if people to whom they witness do not surrender their lives to Jesus, right? They should still be able to see Jesus in you. That's what Brother Duvall always tells you. People should be able to see Jesus in you, whether you're at school, whether you're at the mall, whether you're online posting something. People should still be able to see Jesus in you, right? So what we are, what we are as believers can do is pray and ask for the power and guidance from the Holy Spirit to learn new ways to minister to others, right? So we can become more effective with each attempt. Uh, I, you know, of course, you know, I want to ask you, I, I asked a question and I want to kind of give some, some feedback on what some students uh, uh, asked. And I asked, how often do you pray for other people? So I asked that on the group, group me chat. So this is the responses I got. Definitely are happy to announce. So we asked Carlton Young. Carlton Young responded. And the question once again was, how often do you pray for other people? Carlton Young says, anytime I pray for myself and whenever I think about the person. Amen. Awesome, Carlton. All right. Madison Duvall responded and said, I try to pray for other people every day. Right? Good. Good job. Good job. All right. Todd Selby said, when I know someone is going through something. Right? Great job, Todd. Great job. Ashton Shelton, Shelton said, uh, every morning and night, and, and as they come on, on my spirit to pray for them. Great job, Ashton. So, these are great responses, y'all. Great responses. Thank you all for those responses. You know, so that today we learned about the accessory prayer. And I have to ask you, you know, I'm going to ask you again, what does it mean to intercede? To intercede means to intervene for someone, right? Think about what Nevaeh did. She stood up and said, hey, this is something that we can do, right? God wants you to stand up and intervene. He wants you to be an intervener, right? As a developing young Christian, our duty is to be interveners. All right, so today we learned about the intercessory prayer, which is a powerful tool that all believers can use to communicate with God on behalf of others. So in summary, as believers, we should find comfort in knowing that Jesus is still praying and interceding for his people. Never forget, even in a pandemic, I want you to understand it, never forget that Jesus cares for you and he will fight your battles and lead you to a positive end. Lastly, please know that the things that happen in the world may be a surprise to man, but those things are never a surprise to God. We should thank Jesus for being an intercessor who prays for our safety and success. Okay? Amen. Thank you all so much. So, uh, in closing, we're going to have a, uh, a closing prayer by Cam Cameron Fleming, Fleming, followed by a video, and the song is going to be played in the video is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It's going to be by the St. Teresa of Calcutta Choir, University of Dodoma Udom, in ta from Tanzania. Okay? Thank you all so much. God bless. Good morning. My name is Cameron Fleming, and I will be giving the closing prayer. May you please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us see another day and having yet another wonderful Sunday school lesson. Thank you for letting us all still be together, even if we are physically. Lord, continue to guide us. Continue to help us through this pandemic and help us adjust to these changes. We pray that we all have a good week. Also, that you keep us all safe and healthy. We appreciate everything that you have done for us and that you continue to do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jamaica.